Marine's remains were to be mailed to mom. Tough bikers say, no way. A Marine served his country for 17 long years, succumbing to combat-related injuries when he was only 41 years old. Sadly, his family was unable to attend his service. His ashes were going to be mailed to his mom, but when a group of tough bikers heard of this, they said, no way. I'll tell you what they did next. Jonathan had been a Marine for most of his life. Serving the Army since he was 24, he made it to the ranks of Staff Sergeant in the Corps when he finally retired. He was only 40 years old when he left the Army, but Jonathan was tired and he was discharged for medical reasons. In his military career, he had completed no less than seven tours to both Afghanistan and Iraq. One of these tours can already be grueling, imagine seven of them, and Jonathan had not gotten through unscathed. Based in California, he spent his initial days off duty there. Sadly, these were also to be his last days, as his health was deteriorating faster than even his doctors foresaw. Not one year after his honorable discharge from the Corps, his injuries got the better of him and Jonathan passed away. His death was unexpected and his family, who were all living in Georgia, hardly had time to organize his service or even manage to attend it personally. And to be honest, they also could not afford such a huge expense. California is not exactly around the corner. They did want to pay their beloved Jonathan their last respects though, especially his mother, and arrangements were made to send his remains by post to Georgia. Georgia was his home state, and it was fitting that his final resting place would be there. But how insane to think of human ashes being transported by simple courier service. There should be something more dignified for this, something less mundane for such a solemn cargo, don't you think? This is exactly how the Patriot Guard Riders, or PGR, felt about it as well. The PGR is a non-profit organization made up of bike aficionados from all over the United States. With more than 200,000 members, they are a force to be reckoned with. All members are all different. All come from different places, have different backgrounds. Some don't even ride, although most do. But they all have one thing in common. They have huge and undying respect for fallen military heroes, as well as first responders and honorably discharged veterans. They are also there for those who are currently serving their country and support their family and communities. Because of this deep respect, the main mission of the organization is to make sure no veteran or fallen soldier is left behind until the very end. They regularly attend funerals of fallen war heroes as special invitees of the family who appreciate their support. They will also not hesitate to protect the family from any interruptions created by protesters should there be any controversy surrounding the person being buried. They always come in full attire, of course, with big bikes and helmets and leather jackets to match, an intimidating sight for sure. Their bikes are usually decorated profusely with war-related images, big Harley Davidsons with either two or even three wheels and often a spot to fly the US flag from the back of it, which they always do on these gatherings. Can you already imagine them roaring through the streets behind the funeral procession? If there is no family to protect and the person being buried has no one to come and say goodbye to them, they will still come in numbers and fill out the empty seats in church or at the funeral home. And if that's not enough, most PGR members volunteer regularly for veteran organizations, lending their time to help out those groups that they feel need it the most. It seems like a paradox, perhaps, to see such tough bikers stand up for something so honorable, but it is fitting. The biggest guys usually have the biggest hearts as well. The PGR bikers deeply appreciate the sacrifices fallen soldiers, policemen, and firefighters have made for their country, and this is their way of showing their appreciation. When the PGR found out about Jonathan and that his remains were going to be mailed to his mother, they said, no way. They did not think it was proper at all that this war hero was going to be shipped home via FedEx. The California chapter of the organization sprung into action immediately and came up with a plan for how they would get Jonathan's remains from California to his family in Georgia. The California Patriot Guard riders contacted all of the state captains from California to Georgia and explained the situation. Everyone agreed that no way were Jonathan's ashes being mailed to his mother. They were going to drive him there. Turner was a great leader who inspired his fellow Marines, both in the Corps and in daily life. You were his friend if you knew him for five minutes or five years. He would give you the shirt off his back, the riders explained on their website. 
This was the least they could do for him. Now, if you've looked at the map of the United States lately, you know that California and Georgia are not exactly next to each other. There lies more than 2,000 miles, 3,500 kilometers between the two states, which is a huge amount of ground to cover on a motorcycle, crossing many state borders. From California, the caravan would have to ride through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, to finally reach Georgia. The caravan would have to ride uninterrupted and be organized to the T to make sure it would all run smoothly and timely. But this challenge did not hold the riders back one bit. It was actually exactly the kind of mission you can call on the PGR for, and they took it on like it was the last and only mission they would ever do. They soon drummed up hundreds of volunteers from all across the country to participate in a special caravan to transport Jonathan's ashes connecting the states. Some even came from very far away to be part of the route, from states further up north, driving hours to be there on time. Within no time, this was getting big, with thousands participating and riding along on motorbikes, flying flags, and making miles. Jonathan had always loved riding his own motorbike, and if he had been looking down on those moments, he would definitely have been pleased. Each state mobilized its own rider's chapter to escort Jonathan's remains to the next state border, handing him off to the next chapter leader in full dignity with a small ceremony. Some of these handoffs were filmed, uploaded on YouTube, and watched and shared by many. Some even made it to the evening news, and no surprise, as they were incredibly impressive and touching to watch. First off, the container with Jonathan's ashes was a beautiful wooden box with the Marine Corps seal etched on the front. This box was placed on the biggest bike in the line, fully decorated with patriotic flags and stickers. A folded U.S. flag was carried alongside it, as is the custom with fallen military heroes, and this flag was the first thing to change hands when one group of bikers met the ones from the next state over at the border. A special plaque would also travel along that would be signed by everyone who played a vital part in transferring the remains. This would be a keepsake later to commemorate this mission they all cared for so deeply. The most incredible handoff was perhaps the one between Alabama and Georgia, Jonathan's home state and the last state border he would ever cross. The whole mass had gathered around, with not just riders present, but many supporters coming to pay their respects. Then the moment was there, and a silence fell over the crowd. Despite often hours of driving and inevitable tiredness, Everyone was standing straight as an arrow, chest and head up, with a salute pretty much glued to their heads. The leaders of the two chapters approached each other and first handed over the triangularly folded flag. Next, the box was lifted from the back of the bike where it had laid for all those miles, now ready to move to the next bike, but would take it ever closer to home. The labels and patches on the riders' jackets looked almost intimidating, but knowing that these people only meant well and were doing this out of utmost respect makes them heroes themselves in my book. As the box was handed over, words were spoken to mark the moment. The great state of Georgia proudly accepts the remains of Staff Sergeant Jonathan Turner, who fell in the final leg as he returned home. Thank you to Alabama for bringing him home to Georgia. And then it was done. The mission was accomplished. All that was left for the Georgia PGR chapter was to now make sure the box made it to the house of Jonathan's mother, Annie Glanton. The whole mission had gone extremely smooth, and it was incredible to see how many people had participated in getting Jonathan home. It was not the first escort the PGR had provided for the remains of a fallen Marine, and would certainly also not be the last, but that still makes it very impressive in and of itself. When Jonathan's remains finally arrived at his mother's house, not with the mailman, but with a complete escort of incredibly devoted people on impressive motorbikes, Annie was touched immensely. It's heartwarming to see all these people here, she said. I know that he was loved by a lot of people. Although it did not bring her son back, she would now at least be able to take comfort in the fact that his remains were home and that he could finally rest in peace. It was certainly also a huge comfort to know that there were others caring about the ultimate sacrifice Jonathan had made for his country as well and that they cared so much that they had made all of this happen. His final trip home could not have been more dignified. How amazing, right? To think all these people had done this completely voluntarily. Of all the things they could be doing with their time, 
they chose to devote it to this. Have you ever volunteered your time to a good cause? Tell me which cause in the comments. And while you're down there, hit the thumbs up button if you also thought this story was pretty impressive.